step is to take that chip, put it on a machine, test it, and uh, make sure that everything is going to work because you don't want to go and build a product that has a chip that's going to fail in it. Um, and I want to show you something else too that's kind of phenomenal. You can actually test these chips with microscopic probes. There's a little tiny wire on there um, that you can touch down onto the chip or, or even when it's still on the wafer, you can touch it here and just test it. So um, all of the equipment here is highly expensive and highly technical and again that's the reason why we continue to want to make the chips cheaper because this stuff costs a lot. But isn't that cool? I, I, I wish you could see this up close because it's, it's pretty awesome. Alright, so you run the test and guess what? Any chips that don't work, you throw them away. It's really not economically feasible to recycle the materials once you've layered all that stuff and put it all together. So the chips that go by the wayside, they're just scrap. So that's a, yet another reason, especially in today's um, world of, of environmental awareness. You know, we don't want to make mistakes as we're building these because we really don't want to throw them away. And then finally, you take the chips and you put them into what we call a board. So this green thing, if you've ever looked in the back of a computer or if something you've dropped something on the floor and it broke open, you'll see these green um, boards. They're called circuit boards, printed circuit boards, PCB, and they are what will house the individual chips. So on here you can see how all of the chips are placed. They're actually connected on the back with more wires. So it's kind of like when we built the chip and we connected all, we're going to connect all the little things inside, we also have to connect the chips to each other. So let me show you some products. This is um, actually a video card. So for all of you gamers out there, you'll recognize this as probably like 10 years old and you wouldn't be caught dead with this in your computer. But uh, this video, this strictly processes the video to make your computer do awesome kinds of things. There's a video I, uh, uh, card. I also want to show you something neat. We talked about how the chips can be big and this is an Intel chip. It was called Itanium. It's, it's a few years old. But look at how enormous this chip is. Um, it's you know, bigger than my finger. This is an incredible microprocessor that they built. Um, these two little chips over here are used just to, to save data, just to store data temporarily. Um, the interesting thing about these chips is when you get so much electricity floating around in there, they get really hot. And so what Intel had to do for this particular chip is they had to put it in a little case, you can see the case, and put a heat sink on the top. This is like a car radiator on top of this thing because it generated so much heat out of that little square of silicon. Look, caution, hot surface. Um, so th when I took this apart, it was very, very difficult to take apart. You know, I was kind of amazed to see that those little three pieces of silicon could generate so much heat that I needed like a car radiator to cool them down. So, you know, that, that brings me to something that's really important. Not only do we want to save costs, but we need to reduce the amount of power that these things are using because they'll burn you because this is big and because it uses a lot of energy in the world. We really want things to last long and, and use less power, um, help sustainability in, in planet Earth. You know, maybe someday when someone watches this video in 10 years, they'll say, yeah, we solved that problem and we don't worry about global warming anymore. That'd be pretty cool. So that is kind of an amazing thing. Here is, here is a disk drive. So if you hear about your hard disk, this is what it looks like. That's the big disk itself. But look on the back. There are all the chips and you can see the green printed circuit board that they're all put on and then connected together. So that's what a disk drive looks like. Let me show you something that I think is, is a little more visually uh, helpful. This was a thermostat, automatic thermostat in my house. So you can tell what happens to things that break in my house. Um, we take them apart. <laughs> it's cool. It's like dissecting, but there's no blood and there's no guts. It's really neat. So you can pull all this stuff apart. So look on the back and you can see right there a capacitor. You can see right here, he's kind of smushed down, right there a transistor. And you can see right here resistors. So these are the individual parts that made up this thermostat. And what engineers have done over the years is then to take these kinds of things that are big and combine them into chips so that they can have much smaller thermostats. So the thermostat that I have on my wall now is at least half this size. Um, things keep getting smaller, smaller, smaller. So that's a kind of a cool thing. Um, 
Oh, let me show you this. This is kind of neat. Here's a video camera. And thanks to my dear colleague and friend, Pamela, she took this apart. She likes to dissect stuff too. <laughs> so she took this apart when her video camera broke. And you can see, again, green circuit board in there with little chips on it, another circuit board with little chips, all put together into a video camera. Or she dissected her digital camera. Look at that. Okay, so imagine, remember there's little chips in here. They've gotten so small, these little guys, you can't really even see them anymore like you could in that thermostat. But that's why this digital camera is so lightweight. Very, very small. That's the, the screen itself that's taking up much more space than the chips. Oh, this, here's a fun one, here's a fun one. My first cell phone. This was like the coolest thing ever. Probably cost me a fortune. You know, it flipped down. You flip up the antenna. Yeah, that was really hot stuff, and now I'm embarrassed. But inside, again, you can see the circuit boards. And these chips are still pretty small, so even though this is old technology, we've advanced quite a bit, but not as much as, say, you know, this cell phone that has tiny, tiny, tiny parts in it. And uh, you can see, again, Moore's Law in action. Oh, finally, hey, this was cool, too. Want to see what an iPod looks like inside? It's basically that big, that's the big disc. That's what, where all of your uh, music is stored. That's just storage for, for music and stuff. Look at all the little chips in there. Pretty neat, huh? So that's uh, the heart of an iPod. Boy, it, the, that was kind of an expensive broken iPod, but it's still cool anyway. So all of these things come together on the printed circuit boards into the electronic products. and. You put them in your phone, you put them in your computer, and then you're off to sell an amazing amount of electronic products and make a lot of money.